What makes you immediately lose romantic interest in someone? When you come to them with a problem and they turn it into a conversation about them. When you realize they only listen to reply, not to understand. I have a family member who does this all of the time and it drives me bonkers. She interrupts with what she thinks I want to hear or thinks she knows what I'm leading to, then turns the topic to her. I often have to tell her no and I wasn't done yet. It's not malicious in any way, she's just completely oblivious. Ghosting you then suddenly popping up out of the blue when they want attention. Yes, Brittany, I know what is happening when you call me. You're scrapping the bottom of the barrel and I resent the F out of being the bottom. Wait, that could mean another thing, but you know the thing I mean. If they constantly make you feel bad for them. Felt so bad and was so worried about him for so long that the one time I needed the emotion, I couldn't have it. Fishing for pity is not attractive. If someone is telling me something sad, fine. If someone is telling sad things so I will feel bad for them, that is manipulative sympathy, then I cannot get out of there fast enough. I had a very straightforward conversation with a girl when I was young, where she point blank told me I turned her off hardcore because I wasn't being confident and I was feeling sorry for myself. One of those sledgehammer moments where you cringe to think about how embarrassed you were then, but how grateful you are that someone told you like it was and you learned the lesson. Talking at you, not with you. Yes, to me a conversation is a back and forth activity. I just quit seeing a guy who never let me respond to anything and when I did, he wouldn't even respond and kept blathering on. Those people who just keep talking about themselves get so tiring. I need somebody who also asks questions and listens to my responses to keep the conversation more balanced. When they don't know the difference between being funny and being obnoxious. Scanning this thread to find reasons why someone may have suddenly lost interest in me. We might have a winner here. If they say the words, I know I'm an asshole slash bitch, like, okay, I take your word for it. Also, if it becomes apparent that they have no self-awareness. To everyone in line, please ensure you have reached an acceptable medium between too self-aware and not self-aware enough. Yes, because they can like things in a happy medium. However, the people who typically brag about being an asshole slash bitch aren't doing it out of self-awareness, they're doing it to seem hardcore and be impressive. Nine times out of ten, they're just annoying more than anything else. They enjoy putting other people and their hobbies down. I recently went out with a girl who was doing who was going to a D&D game after our date. She spent a significant amount of time nagging me for being into a D&D. It was very confusing. Don't know how to act in public slash are unaware of feelings other than their own. If all of their exes were toxic or crazy, we all have one or two bad ones. But seriously, it's not always that. If it smells like shit wherever you go, you should check the bottoms of your shoes. Everything looks like shit to someone with their head up their ass. They're obsessed with their ex. Yes, and people tend to have a painful lack of self-awareness about this, they immediately accuse others of being insecure when they're constantly bringing up their ex for no reason. Like, if we're at Red Lobster, I don't need to know what your ex used to order, I don't need to know their favorite movie or really anything about them that doesn't relate to you in some way. It becomes really obvious when someone still has strong feelings for their ex and it's sad when they're the only person who can't seem to see it. Doing dumb things and should know better. We had a new guy join our Friday social group. Very nice guy. Attractive. At the bar, he took his old gum out of his mouth and stuck it to the bottom of the table. Really? So trashy. If they ask how many cavities I have had throughout my life and that shake my mouth like they're buying a horse. Edit. So a little story to go with it. I was working in a food distribution facility in the produce department picking orders. She was an office worker, sales rep. She was a Chinese girl that managed all the Chinese accounts because she was the only one that can communicate with them and put their orders in properly. A tall, leggy young woman. I had been to her place for a few friendly gatherings with her friends. No other co-workers. We decided to go out to dinner and through conversation at dinner we ended up at dentist and dentistry. 
That's when she asked the question about my cavities. I explained that I had cavity-prone teeth with weak enamel. That's when she wanted to see inside my mouth. She even said the word open when she couldn't get a good look at the molars on the top row. In my mind, I think she was assessing the financial costs of taking me on as a boyfriend. After that exchange, though, for me it was friends only. Selfishness. I am very considerate of others and I am slowly learning, learning that I think I need someone that is too. When they have seemingly no opinion, no voice. When every answer is, I don't care or I don't know. Like, Jesus Christ, I'm trying to find out what you like so we can talk. Give me something. It is annoying, but I used to be like this. My stepmom always told me that my opinion didn't matter until I was 18, which meant that she never listened to what I wanted and I was never allowed to ask for what I actually felt like doing slash eating slash watching when she was around. Long enough with that and you just learn not to speak up. I did eventually learn that most people care what you think, but it took some time and gentle nudging from the rest of my family. Watch her share a lollipop with her dog. Not that she ate it and let the dog finish it. She had it in her mouth for a while, then gave it to him for a minute, back and forth like that until it was gone. Gross. Agreed. The hardcore dog lovers who treat their dogs like their boyfriends creep me out. I love animals, and I absolutely adore my own, but there's definitely a boundary that should never be crossed. When they look at me with that heartbreaking expression that says, you're weird and I don't understand you. If they shit in the shower, you think it doesn't go on, I'm here to tell you it does. I mean, I've heard of pissing in the shower, but shitting WTF. When they have double standards. Chewing tobacco. I'm also not a fan of smoking, but it's not necessarily an instant deal breaker like chewing tobacco is. The truth is, I have seen too many men who would sit there and chew tobacco and then spit it into an empty Dr. Pepper bottle, and it grosses me out more than I can express. Went out with a guy once who talked 90% of the time, 85% of that being about how much money he had made, how much he spent on his now ex-wife, all the nice cars he had. I picked him up because he didn't have a right to meet up. He was legitimately confused why I didn't want to spend the night with him when I went to drop his ass off. Never saw him ever again. Edit. My first silver. Thank you, kind stranger. If they are judgmental or tend to jump to conclusions before they know the whole story. Or worse, if they combine these two. I guess because I've been burdened by this in the past. It really makes me feel like the person isn't being fair. If they are biased toward believing bad things about people, I'm not going to fight to overcome that. Partly because I shouldn't have to, and partly because it won't really work. It's a relationship dynamic that I know I don't want. If they give an ultimatum in regards to choosing between a long-time friend and them as a partner, Edit 1. Thank you very much, kind stranger, for the silver. Greatly appreciated. Edit 2. I've read through most of the replies and something I wanted to clear up was I honestly don't think there's ever a situation where you should accept an ultimatum like this, cutting someone out of your life regardless of whether they have a positive or negative impact on you is a huge decision that should not be forced upon anyone by a third party. In saying that, it's definitely the role of a partner slash friend etc. to highlight to you if someone is indeed a toxic piece of shit that shouldn't be kept around, but again the decision should never be forced upon you. Just my two cents. Being rude to customer service people. Telling me who I can or can't be friends with, screams insecurity and raises the question of why I shouldn't be friends with them. If they were my friends from before, why are you trying to get me to cut ties? If they are your friends from before, what have you told them that you don't want them to tell me about? Constantly comparing me to your ex. I'm not them. If you want me to be them, break up with me and get back together with them. Trying to change me because it's sexier. No, I will not start smoking because you think it's hot. Sorry. Making pedophile jokes and then wanted to hang out with my little sister. This one should be obvious. Not being able to take no for an answer even with little things. If they don't listen when you say you don't want to eat eggs because you don't like it slash are allergic 
slash aren't in the mood for it, what makes you think your opinion is going to matter later with bigger things? Aggression, abuse and unhealthy addictions. There are healthy habits, but are there healthy addictions? Water addiction. Generally being unhinged, you can tell if tiny things upset someone to where it ruins their whole day, they won't be able to handle the big things. My ex was like this, if his food order was slightly wrong, bitch, moan, sulk, day ruined. If I asked him to lower his voice slightly because I had a migraine, he took everything as a personal attack, sulk, stomp around the house giving me the silent treatment. He was so effing negative it drained the life from me. I've shared this before, but one time I was out on a date with this girl I met online. I thought she was very attractive and we seemed to hit it off well through texts. We're at this bar and she suggests we play a people watching game where we try to make up backstories for the other people there. I thought it sounded fun, especially since I played a similar game with friends on the train sometimes. Plus it felt like a good icebreaker to get us talking. Well, she managed to take all the fun out of the game by being ridiculously cruel in all her assumptions for no real reason at all. It felt like she was projecting issues she had onto these people. Like one guy was sitting at the bar alone, could have been waiting for someone, you never know, but because he was alone he was an effing loser with no friends that hates his life. Completely killed the mood and I lost interest in her after that. Couldn't see myself going on a second date with someone like that. Arrogance. Rudeness and chewing with their mouth open. I don't need to see your tonsils while I'm eating, it's just rank. Self-deprecating constantly. I get the humor, but not on a serious level. Hey, how's it going? My dick's two inches and I have no job. You? Bad dental hygiene and little to no effort when having sex. If you have sex like a dead fish, I'm not interested, lol. When I find out they have a kid, I know it's shitty to say, but it's the truth. I'm nowhere near ready to have a kid in my life. No matter how much I like the person, I wouldn't be able to commit. As a single dad, I also agree that it's not shitty. It's a pretty common deal breaker. Having a kid definitely limits the dating pool, but it is what it is. Exactly. And I wouldn't want to date someone that wasn't ready for that anyway seeing as that's what my life is right now, lol. Biggest turnoff for me is when they make fun of people with disabilities. I have a couple of friends on the spectrum, with Parkinson's, with Huntington's disease, Down syndrome, muscular dystrophy and the like, and when someone makes fun of them or tries to avoid them like the plague, it is my biggest turnoff. No one should ever treat another human being like they are beneath them because of how they are born. Same if they can't handle me standing up for those, for people in those positions. I will get up and tell someone to apologize to my friends if they are being rude or making fun of them and if they can't handle that, then I'm not r- with the right person. Not having any goals or aspirations. I was talking to this one girl and we wound up cuddling a few times. But she refused to get a job and lived off her parents. She could work, but chose not to and had no plans for later in life. Bye. If they display impatience or a short temper. If they have no interest in giving me an orgasm. If they are close-minded and don't put effort in. Playing hard to get too much or for too long. Clinginess. Bitch, I need to breathe. This, I am very introverted woman and get energy when I'm alone. I need space. I'm an introverted man and I also enjoy my space. Three uninterrupted hours of reading or working on something at my workbench is more rejuvenating than anything I can think of, except four uninterrupted hours, or maybe five. When they start constantly fishing for compliments or constant attention seeking or treating you like their personal therapist. Shitty excuses for shitty behavior. My ex liked to make bitchy comments and when I tried to get her to stop, she'd just say something like, that's just the way I am. Get over it. Been there, a girl who I had been dating for two years was rude to my brother 
And I said, hey, that was rude. And she said, okay, whatever. And I said, no, I'm being serious. That's not cool. And she said, I really don't care. Broke up with her soon after that. She still messages me, but I don't respond. If you're gonna be hostile to my family for no reason, you can F off. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel.